Hey, what's up, guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of my Carolina Hurricanes franchise mode series. I turned in NHL 19. Bam! That's how you start an episode right there. In this episode, we begin the 2025 2026 season with the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, we left the last episode with some questions. Of course, this roster continues to look strong. But after looking around and knowing that we needed to trade either Nino Niederreiter or Pekka Martinen, there was the thought of potentially trading both. Did not mean to go back to edit lines, meant to go to the trade screen. There were two trades that made sense, given Nino Niederreiter's no-trade clause. Either a deal to the St. Louis Blues involving primarily Pekka Martinen, who, of course, is just a penalty machine and has to go, but prim uh, primarily Pekka Martinen for prospects, or we look to deal both Martinen and Nino Niederreiter to the LA Kings for former first-round pick, fifth overall, Essa Alto. And, yeah, unsurprisingly, the popular opinion was to go for Essa Alto, although the other thing I talked to you guys about or asked you about was what should the goal for the season be. And while there were a few suggestions, Fribby and Kevin in particular, not there wasn't a ton of support behind one idea or another. So for the player for the season, should it be Alto? Should it be Nathan McKinnon? The team goal doesn't make sense as far as the punishment for that. So what I'm thinking is here at the start of this season, we're going to go into this with no goal for the season, but perhaps there is a back half, you know, end of season goal, depending on how this works out for us. Maybe we base it, you know, around February. Are we out of the playoffs? Are we in the playoffs? Do we have to maintain a spot? What do we look to do? But right now, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, it's going to be Alto. It's going to be McKinnon. It's going to be this. It's not supposed to be up to me is the point. So for now, we're going to hold off because, I mean, I guess technically if I wanted to, I could have the two player goals, one for Alto, one for McKinnon, and the special teams one, which I don't necessarily disagree that out of those three challenges that they're, you know, bad ones, I don't know what to do. It's like, do I do all three? Do I, do I pick? I don't know. So because I don't know, I'm going to hold off and we're not going to have a season long challenge, but perhaps again, there is a midway point challenge. That said, Essa Alto is going to be a Carolina Hurricane. That deal is going to happen. You beautiful people had spoken. And again, I like Pekka Martinen, but, you know, his, his ceiling is there as a decent third liner. It's just the penalty minutes are absolutely killing us, and it, it just can't happen. Again, the discipline's up there for him, so it's frustrating that that's the case, but it is what it is. And then you have, way the hell, where, oh, wait, I'm on skaters matching block. That's why he's not there. I'm like, where the hell is he? And then, of course, we have Nino Niederreiter, who is not a bad player, but getting Alto, who's a second-line forward, means we can't play Nino anywhere else, and thus we have to get rid of him because I'm not getting rid of some of our younger guys. So it's a little bit of a risk to get rid of a veteran who can put up 50 points for us, but I think it has to be done. Of course, we've, we've talked about the options that are there. Now, we are going to need to take somebody back. It'll just be a random depth forward. They don't have anybody else on the block, of course. They do have Mitch Marner and Dylan Larkin, though. Uh, we'll be looking for... Let's go for someone like Yessi Elanen. That works for me. One year left, and we'll look to add the best draft pick that we possibly can to this deal. Again, we're only allowed one draft pick back. I would say it makes sense for the Kings. I mean, if we take a look, I mean, two third liners, does it, does it make sense? That's the one thing I didn't really check. But let's see, that's the, you know, it's top line. That's, so it, it certainly helps them solidify their top six. And then we'd have technically Anderson Dolan would be the third guy, and then fourth line would be Safranoff, Velarde, Kempe. They do have quite a bit of forward depth. They do. But, if I'm the LA Kings, and I get rid of Alto, and I didn't take back these two players, it'd be Marner, Sernkovich, Larkin, Sakura, 
Uh, Grundstrom, Kopitar, Anderson, Dolan, Safranoff, and Velarde. Fourth line of Kempe, Berchke, Eakin. You know, I, I'd probably be okay with this. I mean, Velarde's on an expiring deal. They got a lot of players on expiring deals, including a veteran in Kopitar. I think I can justify that. I think ideally that deal wouldn't go down. And if we look at the St. Louis Blues deal, I mean, again, as far as whether or not we could really justify forwards there, it's the same situation. So I don't think it's a situation where where we are happening, you know, happening to like overload the Kings. It makes sense. It is, uh, you know, it's going to give them an opportunity. As we'll sign, uh, we'll go for Shafagulin instead. Uh, it gives them some options that are locked down. They're not, I mean, they're on cheap contracts as well. You know, again, Kopitar is probably going to retire soon. I think I could justify that deal. And again, Martin and Anita Ryder, I'd certainly rather have over some of the guys that they have. So we will take that. And whether or not we can get a first round pick along with it, I highly doubt it. But we'll see if that goes through. And it did not because I'm sure Alto's value is much, much higher. I wouldn't be surprised if we have to give up more. I genuinely wouldn't. Uh, you overvalue what? Yeah. So I mean, again, he's he's gonna have, he's gonna have a lot of value. I'm not surprised we're gonna have to give up a little bit more. And of course, this could just come down to the fact that we don't have him scouted in full. Uh, if this continues to be an issue, then I mean, I'll, I'll have to ponder turning off whatever just to make sure this can go through. Your offer meets our block, but the scouts says, okay. Tell you what, uh, we're gonna turn off fog of war for the moment because I'm tired of those BS responses that you always get. Uh, we're going to get that deal done, and then we're going to turn it right back on. So, yeah, because I'm just not going to deal with these responses of like, oh, well, go go scout. No, I don't have time to scout. By the time I try to scout, they'll magically change their mind or someone else will get them. So, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cheese it because, I mean, really, it's not even it's not even really robbing the system, if you think about it. It's just trying to, you know, start... Holy shit! So, um, hmm. This is gonna be expensive. <laughs> this, this is gonna be expensive. As uh, By the way, people are pointing out, Nielsen did indeed make it out of camp. Uh, but again, need a rider. Oh, God. And did I complete... Ooh. Ooh, we, we weren't that close, were we? But see, I would have had no idea. So that kind of had to be done. So uh, let's go ahead and add, screw it, veteran Michael Grabner. Are we even going to be able to make up the value here? Jesus. I don't know if we are. You know, for the hell of it, because I know people are going to be interested. Goaltending-wise, this is what we have right now. Savret's a 57. You can offer to 74, McPherson. So just in case you're wondering what we're dealing with here. Uh, at least now you kind of know that setup, even though Fog of War's on, Gilbert, Cons. I'll just quickly scroll through and uh, you can look at your own risk in terms of that defense. And of course the forwards that we have as well, which of course we'd figure out how good they were going to be or are uh, fairly quickly. So yeah, I don't even know if we're going to be able to pull off this trade now that I look at it. That's... That is fucking expensive. Uh, in terms of who we have to offer, if we were to offer anybody else, now, I'm not saying I'm going to use the franchise goalie, but I could. I'm not going to abuse his value. However, if I can get a fair deal going, then I will use his value to put it over the edge. Let's just say that. Like, if I offer Niederreiter, Mottenen in the first, and that doesn't go through, I'll use his value to help, you know, help it go through, for sure. Uh, the issue is, in terms of any defenseman, uh, the only guy I'd like to give up here is Gilbert. <laughs> I really don't want to give up Vahalati, because he's looking pretty good, and will probably be NHL ready next year. Uh, you could make the argument for Gilbert, though, who should probably make the NHL eventually. I don't really want to give him up, though. And then forward-wise, I mean, I'm certainly not giving up DuPont. I'm not giving up anybody there. Smith, no. Bradley, no. We're going to let them tear apart the league. I don't want to give up Pedersen. I don't want to give up Ray. Hillen, 
could be used. Denny Pepe could be used. Or T-Ball, who we just drafted. So, let's give up T-Ball. So we'll give you two guys who are ready now and a good prospect. What's the response? Still no. If I add a draft pick, what are we dealing with? Say it's a second. What are we dealing with? Just low. Okay, I'll tell you what. So again, you get two forward prospects for one. You get a good prospect back in the deal. I'm tempted to give up a first round pick. I think a second and a third would do it. But I think if we use T-ball rather than a first, that's fair. But I guess the justification would be they'd probably want a first round pick in a deal like this. Because Alta is a superstar. So I'll give up that first round pick. So we're giving up Niederreiter. Oh god, that's a lot though. However, what are the odds that we're likely to get a top five pick? It's also a top five pick on the outs that they want to trade. And he's only an 81. Which is concerning. And we weren't supposed to know that, but we do. So I'm not giving up that first. You're getting two roster players and a prospect for someone. Even then, I feel like that would be too much on our part. Two roster players. I mean, this is the equivalent almost of trading for Pooley Arvey. Two roster players and a prospect is arguable. Two roster players and a second and a third. That's, that's arguable. I don't even think we have to give up T-ball here. I don't. So if you're trading with the Edmonton Oilers, you're giving up, say, Nino Niederreiter. I'm going to still do this trade, even though I know Alto's only an 81. Okay, I'm still going to do it. Now that I'm, I'm not going to back out now that I know how good he is. That'd be bullshit on my part. So I'm giving up a 40 to 50 point guy. A 30 point guy. A 30 to 40 point guy who has a penalty minute issue. I'm giving up 70 points worth of offense here for someone who might end up being better. I'm not also going to give up a prospect. I'll give up a second, and then I'll use that goaltender that I talked about to push that deal through. I'll do that, because again, Savret's not going to develop. So I'll do that. I think that's fair. You take on Nito Niederreiter, you also take on Mottenen, it's a lot of term, you get a second round pick back, and then we use the goal. I think that's fair. Niederreiter, Mottenen, a second for essentially a Puli Arvi. He's even finished. It's perfect. I think that's fair. So we're going to do that. I'm going to use Savret to help that deal go through because he's never going to develop. And we will take that deal from the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, I do get in a little bit of trouble for dealing Savret, but so be it. It shouldn't come back to haunt us. So that deal is done. We are going to immediately go and turn Fog of War back on. Again, once I saw that Alto wasn't as good as we were hoping, here's the thing, though. That's got to be morale. It has to be morale. There's no way someone's listed as a second line forward at an 81 overall. There's no way. So that's absolutely down to morale. So I'm not worried about that at all. I'm not scared off by that. So I think we're good. I think we're good overall. Let's get this roster set. Let's get the sim going. That, that was a little bit more complicated than I expected it to be. But the job is done. So goaltending again is Knight and Biddington. Defensively, it's Riley, Hamilton, Byram, Bean, Middlestat, and Owen Power with Will Borgen as the depth. And now forward-wise, we have McKinnon, Svechnikov, and probably Whitfield. A second line of Peterson, Alto, and Zegra. A third line of Roche, Turcotte, and Robertson. And a fourth line of Allenin, Tulipoff, and Nielsen with Brett Leeson as the healthy scratch. Michael Grabner will be down in the minors. I am digging this team. Feeling pretty damn good about it. I have to admit. Uh, I am going to have to change around uh, position and player types really quickly. Uh, just to make sure, of course, that the best lines are good to go. Like i got to make sure that Zegers is the center, because he's going to be. So I'll be back in one moment, and this season will get underway, finally. Alright, we are good to go. This team is set, and we do have a couple of changes to talk about. The most notable, we're going to be running Whitfield at center, over Nathan McKinnon. He actually has better face-offs. So a slight change there 
on the top line. Second line, again, as we pointed out, Zegros, Peterson, and Alto. Really digging that third line. And the fourth line's pretty interesting as well, as Steph, you know, especially with Steven Nielsen making that squad. Again, the defense, we'll see as far as how that top four works out. But Bowen Byram will start on that top pairing with Morgan Riley. It's another season for Spencer Knight to prove himself. We'll leave it at that. Down in the AHL as well, again, we have so many forwards where I'm really intrigued to see what they can do. Uh, we'll be switching players out if need be uh, based off of you know discovering what their full potentials are and everything like that. I do want to take a look because I haven't looked in a little bit, actually. Sovechnikov, McKinnon, and Morgan Riley is currently our captain. I don't know if he should be. I don't know if we should have a captain. Should we? Out of all the options, I mean, Svechnikov, McKinnon, Dougie. I mean, Svechnikov and Dougie have been on this team since day one. I think I'll leave it, but let me know what you think. Obviously, just a minor thing, but hey, if we ever win the cup, who would you like to see raise it first, basically? Let's get this season underway, damn it. It's taken a while, but I'm excited to see what happens this year. And again, just how good are we? Where are we going to be in terms of the playoff structure once we get closer to the deadline? And how will that all sort itself out? Please don't tell me I forgot to set up scouting. Oh, God, Jesus in heaven, no. I'll be right back again. All right, for the love of God, the scouting setup. I always forget to do that. The season is underway. It's a minor injury for Bowen Byram. And we win 7-1 to over Washington. If that's not a good way to start a season, then damn it what is. Uh, despite the injury to Bowen Byram. But that's okay, because Will Borgen, I mean, hey, you almost made it, buddy. You almost made it. Congratulations. As we move on, we lose 3-1 to to Colorado. Nice, nice little you know, way to not get the expectations up too high. The unfortunate thing is, now a lot of times, you will know if you're a regular viewer of the series, and hey, or of this channel in general, and I'd like to think you are, if you're sticking with me on this series up to this point. Xavier Bernard. Uh, ugh, that's, that's not, that's not, no, that's, that's not going to happen. I'd like to think you, you're well aware that uh, I typically try to find something to rant and or ramble about around this time of The Sim, because I genuinely believe that EA back in Vancouver, or Slash Burnaby, can hear me, and the second I mention that, oh, we're doing well, we instantly start losing, or Bowen Byron gets hurt again. <laughs> oh. oh, we're going to run with whoever the hell's replacing him on the top line. Will Borgen, top pairing defenseman, because why not? But, see, case in point, we lost Anaheim. So, and St. Louis, see, they're listening to me. I told you. I told you. I'm not crazy. Oh, my God, Nielsen just fractured his ankle, too. Well, Brett Leeson, congratulations. You're our fourth line center now. Hooray. Kind of. A big chance for Brett Leeson. Unfortunate for Nielsen to get hurt in his rookie year. As we have to deal with player morale. I like to rant and ramble, but I don't have anything to rant and ramble about. Now, all of a sudden, all the injuries. All of them. Bowen, how are you? You're not even... It doesn't paint a pretty picture. Don't you have a concussion? Of course it doesn't look pretty to you. Your freaking brain scrambled. Just go sit down. The numbers are black and white, just like your vision, because you got hit in the goddamn head. I know you have it in you, buddy. I have confidence in you. He isn't inspired. Bowen, I know you're the right person for this team. I don't believe you. And he just storms out of the room. Like, who would react to that? You go to your coach saying, Coach, man, I just, I don't know, man. I, don't, I, I know I'm struggling right now. And I'm like, hey, it's okay. I believe you. And you walk out of the room pissed off at me? How does that make any sense? Well, let's sim through November, though, shall we? 7-4-1, and one, which isn't great, but it could be worse. And, you know, given the injury history uh, that we've already seen, I, God, just don't. Uh, we'll go best lines for Charlotte. That's okay. Uh, we'll continue to sort it out. As we, uh, I mean, I'm sure we're going to have to continue editing, and Dreger's back, which is fine. Of course, I want to know how good some of these guys are, but we'll, we'll let that sort itself out, because the second I start editing that AHL lineup, someone will get injured, so we'll just keep calling best lines. But obviously, towards the back half of the season, as Brett Leeson was roughed up, but he's good to go, towards the back half of the season in the AHL, I want to make sure our top prospects are in the lineup and getting the playing time that they deserve. 
13, 4, and 1. And Quentin Cons is back to 100%. For the Checkers, Bowen Byram is back to 100% for your Hurricanes. And to confirm, Alto's an 86. 19 points in 19 games. Hessa Alto. Good stuff. Will Borgen wasn't terrible. Let's be honest, we were playing him out of his depth at that point, uh, but wasn't terrible. I'll take it. Uh, Byram's actually doing okay next to Morgan Riley. Of course, we're looking for a big season from Morgan Riley. I'm not going to look at any numbers yet. We'll wait. Let's say we wait until the end of the month. We're less than two weeks away from that anyway, and we'll double check back at that point. As uh, the checkers do have a losing record. I was wanting to pay attention to that. Oh, boy. Jamie Whitfield with a fractured collarbone. He's going to be out for about a month. That's a rough injury. Let's take a look. How is Whitfield, especially with Nielsen already hurt, that's a rough injury. Whitfield wasn't exactly killing it thus far. 14 points in 22 games. We do have the option to move him down to the second line. Maybe that is the case once he's back. We have him set up as a sniper, even though he's better as a playmaker, uh, because typically he scores close to as many goals, but maybe, and even then, five goals, nine assists, but maybe maybe we switch him back. I don't know. I'm starting to be a little bit worried about Whitfield. And then Nielsen, for the record, I mean, only one point and a minus two, but we are going to have to call up somebody else, someone who can preferably play center and is not at risk of being sent down I don't want to call up any of the... Jesus Christ, how are they listed as depth forwards? I mean, the acquisition of Gaspard Gugnon is looking pretty damn good, even though he's not killing it at the NHL level, uh, just in general. Wow, because outside of DuPont, they're kind of struggling a little bit. Who do I want to kill? Who do I want to kill? I don't want to kill anybody. I want to kill and kill and I want to kill kill and uh, You know, we're going to have... No, let's go with Luke Henman. There we go. Luke Henman's perfect. Because I don't even think he's playing... He's been a loyal servant down in Charlotte this entire time. He's the perfect guy to call up right now. So we'll go best lines. Dylan Peterson moves up. Turcotte moves up. Leeson moves up. And Henman is going to be the fourth line centre. So Theo goes over here. Bam and bam. That is the team right now moving forward. Defensively, of course, Riley's going to be on the top pairing. We'll roll with that. That is perfect. And indeed, Hedman was not playing down in Charlotte, so it's perfect. Did we end up beating Philadelphia in that game? We did not. Typically, when a player gets hurt, you don't go on to win the game in this. And we're struggling a little bit. Oh, boy, who am I going to get to disappoint this time via player morale? It's Luke Hedman. Lukey, buddy. I'd like to thank you. You won't regret it. I mean, you know, you know. In those spots, you know, I, I feel, that's true, I feel you can contribute to the team, I'm giving you a chance, and, uh, okay, at least he wasn't pissed, I'm just trying to be nice, man, I'm not trying to be your best friend, but, just trying to be nice, you know, that's all, damn, can't, can't your coach slash GM slash owner be nice, oh my god, we just got pooped on by New Jersey, as we reach December 1st, it was still a relatively strong month. We're at 16, 8, and 1 on the year. In terms of the standings, we are in second behind the Islanders. Two points back with two games at hand. Dylan Peterson leading this team with 28 points in 25 games. And you know what? Let's actually go take a look because due to the injuries, I don't think we're going to change too many things. But looking at this team first, ooh, Nathan McKinnon, man, you're not up there. Peterson, 28 points in 25 games. Zegras, 26 points in 25 games. And Alto, 21 points in 25 games. Our second line is leading the team. McKinnon, 20 points on the air. Svechnikov, 19. And again, Whitfield with just 14. The top line's up, or the second line's outperforming the top line, which is shocking. The third line of Roche, Turcotte, and Robertson all there. It's okay. It's not great. And then the fourth line, Leeson's done very well since he's gotten the chance to play. Allenin's been all right. Tulipoff, eh. And Nielsen wasn't exactly doing all that well. Henman has struggled thus far. I don't even know if he's that good of a center, but I wanted to call him up. Defensively, I mean, Hamilton's there, but Morgan Riley is just not putting up the points that he should be, and it's incredibly frustrating. 
incredibly frustrating. Nor is Jake Bean. And Bowen Byram can just not put up points. I know he's only played 13 games, but damn. Goaltending-wise, though, that is the reason why we are currently on pace to be the top team in this division. Because Spencer Knight's turned the corner, and Jordan Bennington has turned the corner. Unfortunately, that corner led directly to a cliff, because he has been brutal. But we'll, uh, we'll see. Interesting developments so far this season in terms of injuries and what we've seen with you know, you know, players underperforming. Let's be honest, I wouldn't say anyone's overperforming. Players are certainly underperforming. And then, of course, Spencer Knight actually playing like you would hope that Spencer Knight is, which is, or would, which is great. And I'm very, how, no. <laughs> And if there's one thing that can derail this season, it is our top two centers going down to, down to injury. Dylan Peterson's going to be out until February. That is a nightmare scenario. Now, Nielsen's nearly back, so that's helpful. But damn. We are talking about Turcotte, Leeson, Nielsen, and Henman. Arguably Nielsen ahead, but he was struggling. That is going to be the forward core right now. That's kind of scary. The good thing is, I mean, the center depth, it's not brutal. Like, we're not being destroyed by these injuries. But obviously, that's kind of scary that Alex Turcotte is going to be our number one center moving forward. As Gaspard Gugnon goes down to a concussion because all of the injuries, apparently. It's at this time that we might as well look at the draft board. Uh, no franchise player this year, but good old Dalton Creamer and Stutzel. Rain your Stutzel. Gotta love the Stutzels. And Buffet. Would you like a, a parfait? A buffet. Okay, we're good. Yeah, good old Manderville. Good old Justice Manderville. That's a great name. That is a great name. Chris Dreger goes down to another injury in Charlotte. Nielsen just fractured his ankle. I kind of took a risk by hoping he'd be back to 100% before our next game. Spoiler alert, he wasn't. He's hurt again. So we will be calling up, I guess, DuPont. I guess maybe Lenny. I think his name was Lenny. We have to call up someone. Denny Pepe. Uh, I guess DuPont, who's a natural center and was actually doing well. Ugh, he's not that good at face-offs. Burrard's a little bit better. What about Smith? Can you take face-offs? Uh, it's it's going to be DuPont, even though he can't. Actually, how good's Adamski? Adamski, he can't take face-offs either, of course, because generated centers are always terrible at face-offs. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to Mario DuPont, who will be getting the call up here. So, more than likely at center, it is going to be Turcotte, Leeson, DuPont. And, uh, yeah, shit. <laughs> That's the way the team is shaping up. So, again, it's a good thing we have good depth. Because if we didn't, yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. But we do... So hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, on the defensive side of things, so we have two medium top sixes in Ma and Matthew Petit. Uh, was there somebody better? Russo, Tirvainen, and Didier and Robertson were not ours. I want to see how good Hanu Tirvainen really is because I can't remember how good he was based off of uh, when we had Fog of War off for a moment. Fritz Meyer and Mikanoff, I think, were our top two. So that's fine. And then Denny Pepe is in the lineup. Perfect. He was the one I was really worried about. Schilicki isn't a player of concern. So congrats to Michael Grabner making it into the lineup thanks to an ungodly amount of injuries. But hey, we're going to try to make the most of it. The good thing is, oh god, the losses right now. The good thing is, again, we have a good amount of team depth. Unfortunately, it is being tested as Dreger is back from injury, we might as well just go best lines. We're going to have to deal with a lot of line changes moving forward. We are getting crushed right now. And I'm not really sure if there's much that could be done to change that. Some line shuffling maybe, but let's be honest, injuries and such 
will be changing things up anyway. Although Dylan Peterson won't be back for a while. Player morale again. Cool. It's Theo. Good performances are something that just come naturally to me. Obviously. I mean... I've seen better. No impact. <laughs> he just he just walks out of the room. Just doesn't say anything. Not mad. Just, eh, just walks out of the room. Multiple players on Carolina are eligible to be dressed. Are they at 100%? If not, they will not be playing. That is Whitfield and Borgen. The Schmorgus Borgen. It's mainly Whitfield that looks like he's back. So we'll see what his... Uh, his status is before this game against Montreal. Reese Ray is hurt down in Charlotte, but Gaspard is back, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, we don't want to sit out a healthy player for one game because they'll lose their goddamn minds. That's just what they do. So is Whitfield back to 100%, or is he sitting out this game? He is sitting out still. We will wait to see what happens. He should be back for the for the home and home. Actually, not the home and home. Uh, it should, uh, he should be back for these, uh, for these games. The back-to-back -back against Washington and Detroit. Whitfield is back. We'll go best lines for now. Petit is back in Charlotte as we beat Montreal 6-1. to one. And as of January 1st, we're at 22, 12, and 4, which is Decent. That's not bad. I mean, we're still right there. We're four points back of the Devils. It could be more. Considering the injuries and the fact that we have barely had what we would consider a full strength team for the majority of the season, I'm okay with this as we approach the midway points. Goals four per game. Uh, we aren't up there in terms of offense. We're mid-table, which is fine. We might be closer to the top. Goals against. We have the best defense and goaltending in the league, which is shocking. Uh, and in terms of goals for it, it was at a 3-2-1, which is a little bit closer to the bottom. Our power play percentage is not up there, nor is it down there. So, I mean, that's, that's okay. Yeah, mid-table at 24.2%, so... Could be better, but that's all right, given the injuries. And our penalty kill is also not up there, but also not abysmal. So we're an average team. And the fact that we're an average team, despite a ton of injuries, I'll take it. Genuinely, I'll take it. In terms of the forward core, Zegra is the leading scorer right now. Alto and Peterson up there. Again, that was the second line that started the season. You have Svechnikov and McKinnon. Oh god, the second we handed Nathan McKinnon money, man, it just kind of it just kind of went downhill for us. Robertson, Theo, and Turcotte, of course, the normal third line, all on pace to at least hit 30 points. But it's slightly disappointing given that they've had some uh, decent time, especially Turcotte on higher lines. Whitfield had 14 points in 22 games. Leeson has 13 points in 29 games, which is great. Allen with nine points, so. Slightly under pace. Tulipoff only five points, which is really bad. Dupont has five points in ten games, which is great. Nielsen, two points in ten games. Henman, one point in 16 games for Luke Henman. Yikes. Defensively, Hamilton and Riley both. I mean, and, I mean, you know, that's okay. That's okay. But it's not as if we have dominant forwards that are taking away point-scoring opportunities amongst our defense, especially the top three defenders, who are all pretty damn good and should be putting up more points than that. Goaltending wise, it's been solid. Knights dropped down to a 926, which is still great. And Jordan Bennington has, you know, returned the favor. You don't look nervous, Jordan. And I'm sorry that I called you out at the beginning of the season. How dare I? We'll take a look around the league to see how these guys compare. <sighs> Jesus. Oh, Jack Hughes. Just created players are just broken. Absolutely broken. Barrett Hayton's up there for Arizona. Good old Ratty Roddy. Rudy. Fucking Rudy. Rudy. He's up there for Buffalo. Rokan, Forsberg, Bolt Colson. In terms of goal scorers. Yeah. The first in the in the game by default player is Patrick Line. Way down there. Amongst defensemen. 
McCarr at 37 points. I mean, if Matt Dumba can put up 33 points, then Morgan Riley and Dougie Hamilton need to get their shit together. And amongst goaltendies, chicken tendies, the top starter, Wall, Hellebuck, Fitzpatrick, Kaltanen, and Carter Hart, Gibson. There you go, Spencer. You're, you're, you're up there. You're doing okay. Save percentages appear to be a little bit higher, though. And Andy Young right now is leading the race amongst rookies. So make of that what you will, the start of this season. In the next episode, we will finish this season sim. Although I do want to leave you the opportunity now for uh, feedback, suggestions, whatever else. And, of course, is there a goal for a certain player? Or for a certain, or you know, the team in general, do we want to do a mid-season goal for the rest of the way based off of what we've seen here and where we are in the standings? Now, let me know down in the comments below. Leave your suggestions, thumbs up, other suggestions as well. Again, I don't want to have to make the judgment call. This is supposed to be you guys helping, you know, take the decision as far as what the goal is out of my hands to make it more difficult. So, yeah, get involved, man, if you would. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Good night. Goodbye. Yeah.